Hello everybody, this is Gavin Sky. Uh, it's kind of my YouTube debut, and uh, what I have here in front of me is my own pour painting kit. Now, if you're watching this video, chances are you might have purchased one of these, and this is part of your instructional video that goes with your kit. It's basically everything in this kit you have, so I wanted to do a video to kind of go through the explanation of the process a little bit better for you. So. It's good reference, and uh, this might be some inspiration for, for some of you YouTube pourers out there. So, we're going to open up the box. No music. Here's what we've got. We've got... Word for word instructions, and they're kind of funny. I wrote them myself. My girlfriend is helping me edit them a little bit. We've got gloves. Inside this bag is a little tincture plastic bottle of silicone oil. We've got our plastic drop cloth. It's about three foot by three foot, more than enough to cover your table and area. We've got shot glasses, and these can come in handy. Before you go painting, you could fill them up with alcohol and do shots to get you a little loosened up. So keep that in mind. And then we also have our paints, and these are really beautiful white um, chalk type of labels. Uh, this is our white, this is our purple. We've got a fluorescent yellow. Uh, this beautiful sky metallic blue. And we have an orange Julius, which is really hot right now, a really hot color. So what we have here, we've got four colors and we've got our base painting color, base coat. So that's a four ounce bottle and four two ounce bottles, which should be enough to cover this beautiful canvas. This is a Studio Blick. Um, 12 by 16 gallery wrapped so pretty nice little canvas actually we're gonna go ahead and um, just put all this out here kind of get it a little bit organized and we're gonna follow my own instructions if I've done that correctly we'll put this together now uh, first thing we're gonna do uh, this is uh, our very first step so we're gonna find a nice place to um, to do our work. I've set up this little banquet table in my dining room. Uh, got a nice open space, no pets, no cats, no kids running around, uh, no hair, no dust, you know, things that might contaminate the area. Um, you're gonna want this space to be free from pretty much everything for a couple of days for as long as it takes for it to dry. It's very important to make sure your space is level. Uh, this room and this table is actually pretty flat and uh, I'm not really too concerned about the levelness here, but if you've got you know, a slope in your garage or a slope in your basement, you might want to compensate for that. And we're going to actually use some of this cardboard here off this wrapping to um, help with that if we need it. I don't think we're going to need it today, but I'll show you what we can do. I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the package. Spent a little time putting this kit together because I didn't really feel like there was anything out there um, to my standards and to, with this particular technique that kind of a one-stop shop box where you could do this at home and I was I had a lot of people sign up for my painting classes that were really interested in doing this at home and I thought Man, I should put something like this together because they could take uh, take one with them on their way home and and go have a little more fun so got that wrapped up and I've kind of got the packaging out of the way. We're gonna start, go ahead and put our drop cloth down. I'm obviously in painting clothes that I could get a little paint on me. Although this process is messy, if you kind of just be a little careful, you won't get any paint on you. So we're gonna spread this drop cloth out. Go ahead and position our canvas. One thing I wanted to mention later, but this drop cloth will need to be secured and taped down somehow because we're going to be using a fan and at the end of the process to kind of dry everything and we don't want this plastic just kind of flipping up and getting into our painting so it's going to be an important thing to know there's a few little steps in this process that are just really important as long as you follow those rules you should come out with a pretty nice painting so these little cups they go underneath the corners of this and this just elevates the canvas it gives a um keeps it off the table because we're going to be dumping a lot of paint off onto the drop cloth. We don't want this nice pine frame 
sitting in any kind of wetness like that. So I'm kind of looking here and I've got a little bit of a variation. You can kind of see how this is just wiggly a little bit. Um, so this is where I'm talking about, you know, every canvas is going to be different, but um, some might have a little bit of a bow to it or there might be something on my table here that's causing this. So we're going to take a piece of our little cardboard trash here and we're just going to make a little shim, a little impromptu shim here. Nothing crazy, just enough to stick right underneath that cup and keep this thing level, nice and sturdy, pretty good. All right, very next step of the process is going to be putting on our gloves. It's just about time to get messy. Now these are medium sized gloves, should fit mostly everybody. If you have any extra around, you might, you might go ahead and grab them. Um, you know, these things do break and you do get them pretty messy and a lot of people want to take them off in the middle of the process, which I don't recommend to do. I'll let you know when to take these gloves off. So we're all pretty much set. We've got everything set out. Oh, there's one thing. This little silicone, it's just dipped in wax right here. So we're going to cut this off. I'll grab my scissors real quick here. I'm going to cut this off because we kind of want to be ready for everything. We're just going to cut the tip of that off. So that's ready. Don't worry. It's not really going to spill out. Just set it aside. All right. So now I believe we are ready. We're going to start out with our base coat. Uh, I've chosen today to do a white base. It's possible to do uh, black, cream. I really strongly recommend just neutral colors. Um, it just seems to work well with all the paintings that I do. We've done some crazy stuff with like yellow, but in your kit, you're going to get a general basic color like this, uh, a white generally. It's always really good because there might be some settling to just go ahead and give your, give your paints a good little shake up. Make sure they're they're nice and uh, mixed up. What this is, this is a pre-mixed and, and pre-filtered, by the way, these are all uh, strained uh, colors. Now, some of these are, la are latex, some of them are acrylics. That kind of doesn't really matter. Latex, acrylic, doesn't really matter. Honestly, the consistency matters. But we mix this with Floetrol and water until we get that right really just liquidy pea soup kind of consistency and I've noticed that especially in your base coat that that's the most important thing um, to get the cells that we want and the reactions that we want so if your paint's too thick well you just need to buy one of my kits because I guarantee you they're not going to be too thick in my my kits so we're going to start out we're going to basically pour all this paint on and we're going to get the sides of the canvas as well This just gives us that fluidity. It helps the paint just move around the canvas really well. And this base color will come through in your final design as well. So get it all on there. Set that aside. Uh, this is the part where we get a little dirty. We're gonna take our hands and just kind of spread this around. We want a real nice thin layer of paint and we're gonna Go all the way to the edges. We don't want to push a lot of it off. We want to get the sides. We just want a nice, even coat on all of, all around the canvas. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just about like that. This is where we we just kind of make it a connection with the painting, and we start thinking happy thoughts, positive energy. You know. Normally we'd have some 80s music going. You know, we can't go wrong with the 80s. 80s smash hits. Little Cindy Lauper never hurt anybody. Little Cindy Lauper and some wine. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The girls know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm a dork. Um, <clears throat> that is more than enough paint for that base, that's actually excellent. And you know what, if we push a little extra off, it's no big deal. I'm gonna kinda get rid of some of the bigger puddles. That is plenty of paint. 
All right, here's the hard part. Hands are a little bit dirty. We're gonna go ahead and uh, very attempt to keep this kind of in the area of my glove. We're gonna go ahead and start pouring. In this process, I don't recommend that anybody just pours it all in the middle of the canvas. I recommend that we kind of do like S type spirals or something like that. Don't be afraid to kind of go off the sides with it. Um, just when you pull it all in the middle, it can kind of really blend a lot of the paints and you might end up with colors that you don't necessarily want. Um, so in this case, we're just gonna, we're just gonna kind of go in like an S type curve and give her some good, good old, it doesn't really matter and you can do this anyway, just creative freedom. You know, this is a fluorescent yellow. I try to pick some nice light colors and then like something really contrasting, uh, like the purple or the black that we have. All right, pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on this metallic sky blue. This is a kind of a premium color in one of my kits. Kind of worth the extra money. Yeah, I love that metallic blue. You know, you can keep some of your blue. You can keep some of your area not, not covered. I mean, I generally tell everybody to go ahead and pour all this paint on because what we're going to end up doing is pouring half of it off. There's real no long way to do this. Like I said, don't be afraid to go off the sides. Make big puddles of stuff if you want. There you go. It's pretty good there. This is absolutely more than enough paint. Matter of fact, we could probably go for a lot less paint. That's all right. For instructional purposes, we're gonna go ahead and follow through with this. That nice contrasting purple. Let's spread that around all around. Yep, and there we have it. So I kind of get all of my bottles and stuff out of the way. This next part, a little bit messy. So we're gonna lift this painting up and we're gonna build do what I call kind of a tilt the world process. And this is basically gonna be tilting it towards one corner and then following it all the way around every corner, every edge, and watching that paint spill off. And what you're going to see at the very first is all this paint, just a big paint, bunch of paint moving. Well, by the end of this, if we've dumped enough paint off, you'll see this whole thing not moving. And that's really what we want. That's how we know we have enough paint dumped off of this canvas. What we want is a kind of a real thin layer all the way around. So let's go ahead and start that process. And I'll go towards you, towards the camera to kind of show you how this works. This also gives us a really cool gallery wrapped look where that design goes all the way around the canvas. And you can see it's moving pretty good now. We got a lot of paint. I might have to adjust the paint amount in these kits. But it's okay. Uh, something kind of smart you could do if you really wanted to save some of your paint. You could throw those little 15 cent coasters that you get from Lowe's on some more shot glasses or just put them right underneath and just have all this paint dump off and make, make matching coaster sets. It's a little more involved in that process, but um, <clears throat> as far as finishing them goes, but as you can see here, paint's still moving pretty good. And we're almost around all the way. You're gonna watch, watch your thumbs, make sure your thumbs aren't hanging on to the side there, on top, getting in the way. We just about got enough paint moved off. This process part right here, you could also say, well, oh, I really like that purple. I don't wanna get rid of that purple. Well, how about we dump it back the other way? We keep that purple on there. We'll dump a little more off the other direction. So you can kind of fine tune the colors that you want. And you like that spot right there, then we, which I really do, um, we can leave it and we'll just dump paint off the other direction. So this is your opportunity to kind of fine tune your piece. I've got it pretty much almost vertical here. And I can see there's just a barely little bit of paint moving left. So. Um, just hold this on for a few more seconds. 
I can't tell you that we're already seeing some cells in here and this is just naturally forming from the oil that's already in the Floetrol and the latex. So that's a good sign. It means we've got wrapped conditions to make cells. All right, so it's not really moving too much anymore. I think we've about dumped enough paint off. I'm gonna go ahead and place this back down on my cups. Now remember, I got a little shim in here. It's falling off, so if you do use a shim, you wanna make sure you put that back. Levelness is so important in this process. So we've got some really dirty gloves. We don't need to touch painting anymore. I'm gonna take these off away from the painting so it doesn't drip on it. Very carefully, go ahead and remove your gloves and uh, do a little happy dance because you've made it this far. You've done a really good job. People can screw this up. I've actually never done it with one of these, so I'm not quite sure how it's going to go. But what we're going to do is a direct drop of silicone, and that is kind of bypassing that process with the dirty pour because there was so many inconsistencies with the way the silicone was just coming around and, and it would come to this part and it wouldn't go to this part. And I just said, you know, if I'm gonna teach classes on how to do this, we need guaranteed results. And this is by far the best way that I've found that to make results for cell. We're gonna hold this up at a little bit of a high level. And the reason is because our bigger drops are gonna fall down, they're gonna splash and make smaller drops. So we'll have big cells and smaller cells. And we're gonna do this just like the way I described it in my uh, instructions is kind of pretend you're a magic fairy and you're just making a wish. You're just going to be like, shoop, 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 shoop. We're going to do some drops. We're not going to squeeze this thing, squirt a bunch out. We're just going to drop some on. So here goes. We're going to kind of squeeze it. A little bit of splash, splash. A little bit there and there, and that's it. And we're done. And at this point, this painting is a live petri dish. We're going to kind of watch it grow. You could definitely already see where every everywhere that you drop silicone, it uh, it's blossoming out and really. I like. I think I missed a little spot. I'd like to maybe do a little drop there, a little drop here. You can always add a little more if you need to. But if you do too much initially, then uh, you can't go back. So it gives you a little bit of a chance to kind of just dabble in it like i said less is more in my instructions i always tell everybody just be go easy with this stuff and, and take your time don't squirt out a lot of it at one time and that's pretty much it we have basically have completed this and we've got some really beautiful looking cells it's a pretty easy process to do beautiful piece and um now we just have to let it dry so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and get updates. Uh, and you can also purchase these pour painting kits on my website, GavinSky.com. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, like my fan page. I uh, would really, really appreciate it. Uh, all the links are on my website and on my YouTube to um, follow me anywhere you want to follow me. I've even got Tumblr and Pinterest. So. Um, Anything that you choose, just get on there and follow me. I promise to give you a good time, and I won't disappoint you. So, thanks a lot, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.